Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause. That was phenomenal. So, Daisy, we've spoken a couple of times about this issue and it's never any easy to, to address this topic, particularly the situation in Lebanon. It seems to be getting worse to worse. And to actually have the courage to put that on screen into a narrative. Um, tell us about that journey and how you came to be here today. Well, there's a country that we all belong to and I was born there and I witnessed a tragedy unveiling before my very eyes when I started filming this, this story in 2017. I thought I was going back to make a story that was celebrating the Renaissance and the revival of Lebanon after the Civil War. But after spending six weeks in 2017, returning in 2018, and listening to the suffering and the weight of the crisis upon the people, I realised that there was a significant story that hadn't reached the world and the voice of the people of Lebanon needed to be expressed and that's exactly what they asked me to do. They literally looked in my eyes and said, are you going to tell the truth? And that one comment shook me into realising that the idea I had about Lebanon and wanting to show the growth and beauty of Lebanon was no longer possible. It was a myth because Lebanon was just being destroyed and eaten from within and the people couldn't take it anymore. So I went back in 2018, several times in 2018. I went back in 2019 when the revolution happened. My goal was to follow the story until it ended. And the story hasn't ended, but the full stop or the exclamation mark came when the explosion happened. And that was big enough and so important that it was the third biggest news story in the world last year. And that was the point when I said, Halas, no more, trying to make excuses for our leaders. I had interviewed them all before then and I was still trying to make excuses and make them look good in the film. In the end, I put them up for you to judge. I don't pass comment. It's up to you to judge. And the film is a reflection of the absolute truth. No bias, no position, just the absolute truth of where our country and our people are today and why we all must change our attitudes and our beliefs towards the political parties that have brought us to this dis disgusting and de undeniable destruction of our dignity. So I'm now going to throw this question back onto the audience here. Please raise your hand if you've seen the movie so far. Okay. Just so over here. To be honest, that's a fair more than what I expected, which is fantastic. And we'd love to see more hands raised up, and hopefully by the end of this interview, we can encourage you to, to watch it. But one thing I'd like to point out, for those who have watched this, saw something phenomenal, and that's something we touched on earlier, that we actually did see some of these politicians front the camera, try to tell their story, and now looking back, you can tell how convincing they were with some of their lives. How was that received on the back end? I noticed there were a couple of people being interviewed uh, who now kind of turned their back on the project as well. I mean, how did you find that experience between then and now? What is the most difficult thing to really accept right now is that there are people in this country who I believed were on our side, were on the side of the Lebanese people who have abandoned the Lebanese and abandoned the truth because of their silence and their absence at a moment when Lebanon needs them most. And the only reason I can assume they are nowhere to be seen 
except this organisation, except the World Lebanese Cultural Union, the only organisation that has stood up and accepted and acknowledged this film from when we were overseas. And I thank you, George, and I thank you, Dr. Sheen, for doing that and acknowledging what this film is about. It's about telling the truth. And there's so many Lebanese leaders in our community who have abandoned me. I don't care about me. It's not about me. This is about you, your families, your history, your legacy, your dignity. Because what's happening to Lebanon is shameful and we are being shamed about look, listening to stories about our country. We are embarrassed. I went to France, I went to Croatia, I went to Greece, I went to America, I went to England. And people look at me and say, what a shame. Lebanon, what a shame. And that's all they can say about our country because they all knew what it was like. They all remembered what Lebanon was like. And who has abandoned Lebanon now is us or people who are allegedly the leaders of Lebanon in our community, not only here but in other parts of the world, but more so I live in this country. I've been here 50 years and I'm ashamed of what's going on because I've been bullied, harassed, hacked, and so have others who've tried to support my film online and encourage people to go. They have been bullied and attacked for trying to get you, and especially in Melbourne, to go and watch this film. Now tell me why you think somebody would be doing that. Because they don't want you to know the truth. They don't want you to see the evidence. They want you to stay ignorant and easy to fool, gullible and believe the false propaganda that has led Lebanon to this situation at the moment. If these people in Lebanon, any single one of them, had helped Lebanon, had in any way saved the people from this destruction, I would be the first one to put my hand up and say, go with them. But this group of people and their cronies, not only out there but here and around the world, are the ones that are going to continue to destroy our country. I'm sorry I'm taking this to a very serious level, but Lebanon can't take it anymore. The Lebanese can't take it anymore. I was there for two months and I witnessed you are sitting here today, I'm sitting here. I just can't understand. It is unbelievable to me to see what I witnessed and to be sitting here smiling and having a drink. I just, it eats me up inside. The level of poverty in our country is 82% of people are living below the poverty line. My cousin texted me to say today to beg me to send her $600. She's got bills to pay. And these leaders here and in Lebanon want you to believe that it'll be fine after the election. It won't be fine after the election unless we decide to vote for change. And that's the message of the film. So speaking of timing of the film, now you've had a gradual release overseas and you've been acknowledged by numerous organisations, the one of which was the Cannes Film Festival. Um, help me out here. Yeah. Well, what the movie that, that matters there? award at the Cannes. The movie that matters, exactly, yeah. right? That's over in France. Yeah, They're the biggest film festival in the right. world. You've had acknowledgements in Italy. In Croatia, in America, we won best film at IndieFest for the best documentary. We won best director, best documentary at another film festival. We've been invited to 15 film festivals, including the Cairo Film Festival, which was just last week. Um, so the, the fascinating thing about that is that people around the world who are not Lebanese are watching the film and seeing the importance of the message and understanding how serious it is. And we as Lebanese need to acknowledge that as well. We are in a very serious situation. And one thing that I probably want to get to at that point is the timing of the release. So we, we, we had the launch almost a week ago now, two weeks ago now. Um, what was that, what was the significance of releasing it during that period? So we officially launched the film in Australia on the 1st of December. Everything we did around the world before that was festivals. We were invited to festivals. 
so we haven't officially released around the world. But the importance of releasing in Australia means that we are bringing it to you. It's open to the public now. It's on public display. Unfortunately, because of the limited availability of cinemas before Christmas, because of the two years of COVID, uh, there's all of the blockbusters that have booked out the cinemas. So we only had a short window to get it out. Um, but we will be booking again in February and we will reach out to you. And we really encourage you to go and see the truth for yourself. Don't let anybody else tell you. Just go and see it. And if I'm wrong, please tell me I'm wrong. But at least give it a chance for you because I'm on an outreach program. All I'm doing now is working to reach out to educate and inform the Lebanese so we wake up and we see for ourselves and make our own decisions. We need to be empowered we can't continue to deflect responsibility and let others tell us what's better, best for us when you've seen the result of what they think is best for us. So accountability, 100%. There's no accountability in Lebanon and they want that. But we have been brought up in this society where we know why people are made accountable and why politicians are shifted out of government We've had more prime ministers shifted out of government in the last 10 years than any other country in the world. And that's because we're a true democracy and we make them accountable. We've learned this here. We need to use our education and what we know here to enforce those rules upon Lebanon. We are bankrolling the criminals. Your donations are bankrolling the, the mobsters in Lebanon. Do you still want to keep doing that? Yes? I don't think so. But seriously, all the diaspora is bankrolling them because they are so excited about you sending money and saving their, your families because they don't have to do it and instead they pocket the money that is coming to them as aid from international governments. So when do we wake up? When do we say, enough? Now. now. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, I'll now like to call upon Dr. Shangaha to, to the stage and also uh, Mr. Lavendi, Mr. Lavendi is here, to join us quickly on the stage as well for a special presentation. Daisy, it was so nice to have you with us this evening. Thank you, Shane. Thank you for your strong sentiment and your message. Thank you for your love of this beautiful country. We would like to commemorate your presence with us this evening by a coin we have struck for you in pure silver. Perhaps, wow. the, Thank per you. perhaps the permanency of the coin reflects our strong bond. Thank you so much. And we've inscripted on it um, a thank you note oh, wow. um, from us to you. That's amazing. Wow. Thank you very much, Daisy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I don't think I've ever received anything so special. Thank you, Daisy. Thank you. And as Daisy said poignantly, if she's wrong, tell her she's wrong. But as we all know, Lebanese women are never wrong. And so there's nothing to say. That's good. Halas, <laughs> enough. Thank you very much. Please give Daisy another round of applause. Thank you.